Hey guys, and welcome to this painting tutorial. I'm really excited about this one, as it's my first ever Chaos Knight model. I'll be narrating the entire process from start to finish, showing you all the colours and techniques I use to paint this guy. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, the first step after building is, of course, priming. I primed the underskeleton with a black, and the armour panels with a grey, as it will be easier for the first colour to stick to it. Starting off the project with some airbrushing, as it is a very large model. So I'm going to put some airbrush thinner into my airbrush, and then put some Cadian flesh tone into it, and mixing it until it's about a milky consistency. Then I'm just slowly going to build up the colours over this grey primer, until I get a nice even coverage. I'm using about 20 to 25 PSI on my compressor and just doing multiple coats, letting the first dry before moving on to the next until we get this nice Cadian flesh stone. So I wanted the main like feature of the armor to be a cool uh, chaos stencil pattern as it'll be a lot easier than freehanding of course and also nice and quick. So the backing of this um, stencil wasn't sticky, unfortunately. Um, so I just used tape to put it down. Um, so it made the process a bit annoying, but I managed to make it work. Um, and I'm just spraying some black over the stencil. I worked my way around the whole model with a variety of sizes of this Chaos Star. Um, and yeah, I was pretty happy with how it came out. There's a bit of overspray as you can see, but in the next step, we're going to go and tidy up. So yeah, we're using some Cadian Flesh Tone and some black, and I'm just going to tidy up this overspray. This was probably the most boring part of the process, um, but very important to do as I wanted this night to look proper. And airbrush overspray doesn't look very good. <laughs> so, we're going to tidy that up right now. After that's tidied up, I'm going to add some little scratches to show this uh, night's been in the wars. Uh, one of my favourite parts of the process actually, just giving it some character and making it not look pristine and out of the factory like the Imperium Knights. So I've stuck all of the armour onto the skeleton to make the next step a bit easier, which is shading the panels with some Gunman Flesh, a beautiful contrast paint. And it's one of my favourite techniques actually. It take, it's so quick and adds so much depth to the model. Um, it's lovely and saturated and also um, goes on so smooth with an airbrush. So I'm working around the model slowly building up the shadows in the areas I see fit. It's, I think it's really important that I did stick on those panels temporarily as I knew exactly where I wanted the shadows to go. Probably the most satisfying part of the whole um, painting process of this night. So I'm gonna leave a bit more footage of this in just to show you guys how I uh, built this color up. You can see in not much time at all, we've added so much um, contrast to the model already. And it's one of the main things that brings it to the next level, in my opinion. Contrast paint is really good as well, as you can see, it's not really affecting the black chaos symbols that we spent so long working on. Uh, it's quite translucent paint, um, so it's mainly affecting the Cadian flesh tone. After we've done the gloom and flesh shading, I'm going to do another layer of, of shadow with some Vulpus pink contrast. 
and I'm aiming at the areas of gloom and flesh that I've already done, but obviously leaving some gloom and flesh behind. We're aiming it a bit in, in a bit smaller space, and that will create a nice transition from Cadian to Gilliman to Volpus. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm trying to emulate a Empress Children Knight, and this Volpus Pink was very important to, to do in that, as before it looked a bit orange, didn't it? So we're adding some nice pink into it here. I'm really a big fan of the Empress Children scheme with like this kind of salmon pink. I've seen a few examples of it online, and yeah, big fan, and I wanted to kind of give my own version a try out here. So with that done, I wanted to add a bit more interest to the model. So on this little hood thing, I'm going to do some hazard stripes. So I'm gonna build up some Avalanche Sunset on this, on this armor panel, nice and slowly. And then I'm gonna highlight the top with some Yuri or yellow, uh, just giving it a slight highlight, um, just show the volumes a bit more. And there it is, all nice and uh, nice and saturated and lovely built up colour. So the hazard stripes, I'm using some masking tape. Unfortunately, the thinnest tape I had was uh, not, not thin enough. <laughs> so I'm cutting it down with just an X-Acto blade and sticking it across the hood like that. Then I'm going to spray some black over the yellow. I didn't do yellow over black because uh, the, the 950 is much better coverage and then having a nice satisfying peel off. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best parts about airbrushing. So it's still, it looks a bit, um, looks a bit boring right now. So I'm gonna add a lot of scratches with a mixture of the Avaland and Uriel Yellow. And that's going to give it a nice battle-worn look. To finish off the hood, I'm going to uh, airbrush some snakebite leather into the shallows of the hood. Just a few passes can make such a big difference as you can see. And it um, saturates that yellow even more, gives it a lot more interest. And that's, uh, that's literally it takes a few minutes and we've got this lovely little hood that I think contrasts against our pink so well. So the last bit of airbrushing is spraying this Vallejo black metal over the skeleton of the knight. Make sure to use a mask and some gloves as metallic paint can get everywhere <laughs> and um, wash your hands after as well as it always finds a way onto your nicely painted armour panels. So we're going into the brushwork now and we're starting with the base coat. So I'm using some bulbous pink and some glue and flesh, a nice mixture of both, and I'm going to panel line the armour trim in preparation for blocking in the black. It's worth doing this just to make blocking in the trim a bit easier for you later on. And that's the difference from left without and to right with, and obviously looks a lot better. So the next part of the painting process is blocking in all the trim in Vallejo 950 black. Just use a big enough brush so it doesn't take forever. Um, be careful because if we get that black onto our lovely shaded pink armour, uh, it's going to be hard to fix it um, without redoing it as it's airbrushed and nice and smooth. And this is all the trim blocked in thanks to Movie Magic. And as you can see, it makes that pink armor really stand out a lot more. Next, I'm going to work on the black trim a bit more and I'm going to thin down some Rolex hide a lot. And um, as you can see, it's nice and watery and we're gonna use it as a recess shade, going around all the rivets, all the little um, nooks and crannies. 
and this will give a bit of a more weathered look. After that, I'm going to use a size zero brush to edge highlight around the edges of the trim uh, with Eschen Grey. Make sure I get every little dot and um, I promise it will be worth it in the end. After that, I'm gonna use some Dawnstone just to get the bits that will be more caught by the light. Just look at it from the top down and see what bits would look good with this extra edge highlight. And there we go, that's all the black trim done, looking lovely. Next, I'm gonna be using some of that black metal by Vallejo again, and just blocking in all the metallic parts on the armor panels. Take your time with this, as you really don't want any of this to spill over onto our armor color again. Next, I'm using some Decayed Metal by Scale75 to block in some details on the skeleton and around the model, just to provide some contrast and make it a bit more interesting, as it wouldn't look great if it was all one colour. I'm going to use it to block in this Chaos Star and exhaust pipes on the model as well. And there we go. As you can see, it already looks a lot more interesting with just that one colour. Finally, the last colour we're blocking in is some um, Vallejo Silver Air and we're going to work around the model aiming at all the pistons. The next step of the process is an oil wash to bring definition to the model. It's important to note I sprayed the model liberally with satin varnish to protect it from the wash and spirit. So I'm using a mixture of brown and black oil to bring a nice grimy feel to this night. So I'm going to stick a dollop of the black and a dollop of the brown into this lid and mix it liberally with some mineral spirits and so all the lumps are out and we can apply it. I did quite a lot here as you can see as I didn't want to waste precious known oil and agrax on this massive skeleton. I use so much of that and it's uh, very expensive. As you can see it's going lovely over our varnished metallic bits. Had to get the old dry brush out here. It's uh, one of my biggest brushes that I don't really care about. I'm just going to absolutely dunk this boy in some wash. Getting it all into the recesses and give some definition to the model. After I've covered the entire model with this wash, I'm going to wick away uh, all of the all of the oil on the surface of the metallic parts to give it a bit of a more smoother finish. And by do and doing that, I'm just putting some white spirit on the brush and then wiping off all the oil onto this paper towel, as you can see. This took a bit of time, but was well worth it as we got this nice look um, without using much paint. After that's done, I applied some satin varnish over the model after the oil had dried to seal it all in. Next, we're working on the fine details on the model to make it stand out. So the first thing we're doing is blocking in all these spiky poles around the armor panels with Rakar flesh and also the little horn things <laughs> as well. Built up a couple of layers of this color to get a nice strong layer. We're gonna wash the skulls in contrast paint with some skeleton horde. Simple as that, just to add some interest, some shade. I'm going to carefully wash the spikes and horns with glue and flesh. Uh, I am dolping on here, but I am cleaning it up afterwards just so we didn't get any coffee stains really. The next part takes a bit of time, but it's well worth it. We're using some Mornfang Brown and we're going to glaze some of the colour down into the, the bottom of the sections. And this will create some nice contrast 
and make it look a ton better. And there it is, all around models you can see. Next, I'm going to dilute some scrag brown a lot with water and just shove it into pretty much all the metallic areas. Um, this will resemble rust. Super easy and super fast way of creating some interest for your metallics. As you can see, I'm going around the entire model and adding uh, carefully, I'd say, into areas. It's easy to overdo these, this, this technique. Um, so yeah, go slowly and uh, less is more. Next, I'm going to use some Elven Gold to highlight our gold details on the model. I'm just going to take a lot of the brush and then edge highlight this little emblem and also highlight all of the gold details around the skeleton. I chose to just highlight the gold instead of the silver as well as that would take way too long and I think this was enough to uh, add interest. Next, I'm combining some Cadian Flesh Tone with some Rakar Flesh to kind of add some battle damage and also edge highlight our way around the pink armor. I like doing this kind of scratchy technique a lot uh, as it's quite quick and also adds a lot of character to the model. Just going around the key edges and stuff that stands out using a Artist Opus size zero brush. And that's all the battle damage done. So next I'm going to be doing a nice glowy eye for the head of this knight. And I'm first going to block in the main lenses with some white. The bits I want to have some OSI on them, I'm going to block in a Dawnstone as it's obviously darker than our white. And you'll see why in the next step. So I'm using some contrast paint, some Talisar blue, and I'm going to spread it carefully across all of the white and grey we blocked in. Now the way it's going to cover means that the, the white's going to be more obvious than the grey, uh, more, more bright obviously, and this will be the start of our OSL glowing technique. As you can see I'm wicking away the blue in the centre of the white, and the effect is, also, is already starting to show. After that, I'm going to combine some of our white grey with the Talisar blue and we're going to build up the intensity of the white slowly over a few layers on the lens. Now this is really thin as I want the glow to be nice and smooth working from the outside to in, blue to white. Just make sure it's dry before applying the next layer which will be adding some more white until eventually we reach to a nice pure white and the effect will be complete.
I also did this glow effect on the little top hatch of the armor as well and really liked how it came out. So the next detail we're doing is this loincloth. So I'm mixing some Rhinox hide with some Rakar flesh in the airbrush with a little bit of thinner. And we're just going to apply a nice uh, even base coat onto the cloth, building up uh, slowly, laying in multiple layers, letting each one dry before moving on to the next. After this is done, I'm going to put some pure Rakar flesh through the airbrush, uh, a bit thinner this time as we're building up the layers, and going to aim just at the kind of creases on the cloth. A pretty quick way of doing it. And then finally, some thinned out Rakar flesh. I'm going to use switch over to the brush and kind of apply some edge highlights and build up our layer from the airbrush. The paint is very thin, so the effect of it um, gets a bit more subtle once the paint is dried. We're finally adding some silver grey into that Rakar flesh and we're going to add our final highlight on top of our Rakar. And that is the loincloth complete. So next we're moving on to some transfers, a nice easy way of adding some cool detail. I'm using the standard Chaos Knight transfers that came with the kit. and I'm cutting out this uh, white Eye of Horus, I think it is. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I liked how I thought the white would stand out great against the pink and the black. Just applying it onto this tilt shield here. Quite a focal point on the model as it's right next to the head. So as you can see, I put the transfer on my hand for convenience and using some micro set now and putting a nice generous layer onto our surface of the, the model. And then making sure the water's gone from the transfer, applying it onto the backing carefully of the brush uh, and using a bit of bit more micro set just to jiggle the transfer, you know, prod it about until it's set in the place we want. So after leaving the micro set to dry fully, we're applying some micro sole onto the transfers and this will kind of melt the backing and make it vanish a little bit and set the transfer fully. After that's done, I'm going to put a bit of freehand on the loincloth. I kind of redid it as you can see as I tried to put some transfers on it first, but I didn't like how they were at all, so I had to kind of sand it down and redo it. I'm just going to copy this, um, the Eye of Horus, and I just put some freehand on it, just simply with some black paint and a small brush. Again, a Artist Opus size zero. Uh, the great thing about Chaos and Orcs as well is that you could be messy uh, with your free hands and have a bit more artistic license. Um, so it's kind of, you can get away of doing messy designs like this. Onto the basing, a fun and easy part. So I'm using some Agrelin Badland, some Citadel texture paint, just splooshing it out of the little pot and covering the whole base as you can see. Next to add some uh, contrast fast, I'm using some burnt umber through the airbrush with some thinner. I'm going to apply it randomly on the base, um, making sure we're leaving some of the original Agrelin and Badland colour behind. And don't worry about getting overspray onto the feet as it will just add to the effects of weathering. And then we're going to dry brush some Yushabdi bone over the entire base. Just gonna wipe off the excess on a paper towel and simply work away around the base. Nice and simple, nice and fast. I'm going to paint the base rim in 950 black, a very important step. 
just to kind of center the model and um, make it nice and presentable. Next, I'm using some green grass tufts to add another layer of detail to the base. I'm going to place them strategically to cover up the holes we, we kind of made whilst dry brushing. And this green will contrast really nice against the pink of the armor. And with that basing done, we have finished painting the night and it's time for the grand reveal. And here is the finished Chaos Knight. I absolutely loved painting this model. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe picked up something you can apply to your own painting. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.